All right, it's time to farm more blue lock, quote unquote, drama. This is called the first anime in history to have worse animation than a manga. I disagree. One Punch Man, right? JC Staff ruined season two. I don't care what you care you say about season two. Like, compare that shit to season one. Not even the same. The manga is better animated than the anime. But for Blue Lock, that's kind of the same scenario. At this point, we should rebrand the name Blue Lock to PNG Lock or yep. the Blue Lock PowerPoint lock. presentation because this is definitely giving the seven deadly still frames a uh, run for its money. I mean, if anything, why is the most recent episode being criticized compared to the past episodes? Because a lot of people are on the same opinion that like, oh shit, yo, things are actually moving. Now, is it actually like all moving and perfect animation? Fuck no. Absolutely not. However, if you compare the most recent episode where Nagi, Areo, and stuff is happening, way, way, way better than the previous episodes. And one of the most important talking points that I hear that justifies why this is happening is the fact that Isagi is missing. Isagi's scenes, it takes up too much fucking dialogue. He's just yapping too much in his own head, monologuing. And due to that, it creates these like choppy instances where... PNG Lock can be better min-max. His existence on the field kind of like creates an opportunity for PNG Lock to happen. And another thing, which is my conspiracy theory. Think about why the most recent episode was like half decent in terms of animation. Why is that the case? Well, I see Rail, And I see Nagi. What else is Blue Lock promoting? The fucking movie. My schizo conspiracy theory on why the most recent episode was the best relative to the other Blue Lock animations in season two is simply due to trying to make people want to watch the fucking movie. They're like, yep, let's uh, give them a little bit more animation than before. And the movie's happening right now too, right? Two birds, one stone. And definitely giving Meliodas versus Escanor's fight a run for its money as well. Because this animation truly... It's appalling, and you could just see how it has literally fallen off a cliff. Yeah, and also, I'm just focusing on this right here. Steins Gate reboot announced for 2025? The fuck? Maybe this is our way of watching Steins Gate finally as a weekly seasonal when it gets a reboot. And it's crazy, because this isn't just a one-time thing that's happened with Blue Lock. I've kind of talked about it's this in my Uzumaki video I made about a week ago. Visual but novel? this has been a constant thing throughout Season 2. Ever since Season 2 of Blue Lock started to air... The animation has taken a noticeable just nosedive. It is nowhere yep. near what it once was. And it's simple. If you really want to see what's happening, just go look at my other video, right? Literally, just go look at my other video of... Where is this shit? We literally covered it. An animator from 8-Bit Studios came out and spoke about exactly what's happening. If you've watched the video or even read the tweet here, right? There are... Animators saying, look, we put in the work, but the final filter, the final decision makers, when we put in the work that we actually animated, they cut that shit out because they want to save money. They don't want to include all of that shit. Like, it's, the animators are not given enough time to work on these things. And even when they do go out of their way to animate, shit gets cut out. It's a stupid fucking top-down decision. And at the end of the day, just corporate greed as usual. And what fans have expected from the show. Now, fundamentally, I don't know necessarily what is going on with Blue Lock. I mean, obviously, we could chalk it up to production problems. But I don't know necessarily what exactly is causing that. Is it... Oh, come on. Do your due diligence, bro. You see, I thought that he'd be covering that tweet, too. I had to do the fucking chibi video instead. Because, of you know, there's not enough time to work on it. Is it poor scheduling? Is All it of the a above. director meddling? Maybe wanting All a of certain the above. direction with the story? I don't really know. All I can say is, is that I'm not the only one that obviously is looking at Blue Lock and being like, what the hell happened? Like, what? I enjoy the community memes that's coming out of this disaster, though. That's the best part of it. What what happened? Like, the art and animation of Blue Lock Season 1, you can look it up online. Go to, you know, just find clips from it, and you'll see- Nah, you don't even have to do that. Just watch Season 2. The most recent episode shows you- They literally do flashback scenes from Season 1. And whenever Season 1 scenes are being brought in as, like, a flashback, it's so funny because things are moving. Bachirai is doing this all with triples, and I'm like, holy shit, legs are actually moving. See, it's really good. I mean, there's a reason why it gained a lot of popularity and why a lot of people love Blue Lock was because 
It was a good sports anime. Looked phenomenal. It looked on par at the brief beginning. And there was also a timing, uh, a very convenient timing where World Cups were happening. Japan was popping off. People are making memes of, oh my god, they really are Blue Lock for real, for real. Everything was on its side. And if you look at the amount of projects that 8 Bit Studios has picked up in 2022 versus 2024, in 2022, season one, they only had Blue Lock and one other anime. That's it. In 2024, Mahoka, they fucked that shit up. Tensura, mid adaptation, Blue Lock movie, Blue Lock season two, and a bunch of other minor projects. Way too much fucking work. The production committee, the decision makers who are deciding this are ruining it. The animators do not have time to actually put out the work. And when they do put out the work, the actual motherfuckers that's, you know, who, who gives a green light of what gets included in the episode, they cut out the animation, which is mind blowing. But at the end of the day, just saving money, corporate greed. And another thing that I was just thinking about is, oh yeah, whenever there's like a movie announcement, it's not a good sign, guys. Genuinely, unless it's like Ufotable or like MAPPA <laughs> and, you know, JJK, uh, what I'm trying to say with the movie shit is uh, whenever people get hyped up, it's like, oh my god, movie's coming out, woo! Nah, bro, whenever a movie and a new season coming out, their resources are spread thin. Like, you think it's hype? Sure, it's more content, but like, do you think it's going to be the same quality? They're fucking milking it, bro, in the worst way possible. Eminence and Shadow movie is a separate project. I'm sure they're going to give it the love it deserves. There's no way they're going to ruin that. Plus, there hasn't been a season two announcement. So a standalone movie is perfectly fine. But here's the other thing, right? Blue Lock, the movie I heard was trash. The hell is that about? Like, I thought that they were going to do all out in the fucking movie and like season two is going to take a hit. They, I heard they was fucking both trash. It looked on par with Haikyuu. It looked on par with, you know, Critical No Basket. And it's like, yo, this this might be the next big thing. Obviously, we fast forward to season two, and that's um, that's clearly not the case anymore. The like I said, the animation truly has fallen off, yep. and it's crazy. It's literally just nothing but still frames, just being over again. I I don't think like this is the example you should be using. You shouldn't be using the most recent example for still frames and animation, right? Listen, I think that I try to really give an objective take on all this shit. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. The most recent episode genuinely gave us more hope and more copium. Things were moving, and I'm like, oh shit, maybe they're actually saving the budget for a U20. It does give me hope, but let's get real. Is that going to happen? Only one way to find out. Overlapped on a background with a CGI soccer ball flying around. Yep. And to be honest with you, still frames aren't necessarily a problem. They, they, they can be there. There is a time and place for still frames. Yeah, but in a fucking sports anime, bro, when the entire fucking content is people moving, the movement is the most important thing for sports. And this is how you're going to do it? But it's very clear that just overall, I, I don't know if it's a storyboarding issue or not, but like the direction of... Like, whatever's, whoever's directing, you know, Blue Lock, it, it feels very lifeless, soulless. It doesn't feel like there's any energy in this anime whatsoever. It just feels like, hey, let's, um, let's paint the manga panels and let's, yeah. uh, let's just Move let's the roll CGI it out. Ball. That's exactly what we're going to get. And to be fair, I haven't read the manga of Blue Lock, but I'm willing to bet you someone's probably made a comparison or something. I am curious to see the comparison between, let's say, the Blue Lock manga and actually the Blue Lock anime and see if... Yeah, there's plenty of channels that cover that content, right? You know, season two, uh, Blue Lock manga versus anime comparisons. The art, the shading, there's way more, like, impacts that I feel looking at the manga than the colored in frames of the anime. They're just actually adapting manga panels, or are they actually doing in-between frames? Because at the very least, what I see here... Also, call me crazy. And even if Tower of God is moving more than Blue Lock right now, Blue Lock is more hype and entertaining than Tower of God. That is a very interesting thing. Maybe it's just me, but Tower of God Season 2 right now, it genuinely feels like another fucking generic bullshit fantasy story. All the aura that I felt in Season 1 is gone. I genuinely cannot feel immersed enough to give a fuck. Like, all that's just lost. It genuinely looks so generic and mid. And even though things are moving more than in Blue Lock, and Blue Lock is PNG Lock right now. Blue Lock, like, it's genuinely fun to watch. It still is very fun to watch. I get way more hype out of it.
it looks like nothing but keyframes that is being adapted and animated for Blue Lock, which yep. is just, like I said, the quality of the show feels very, not even below average, very far below average. Like, it is so below on the bottom of the barrel, I would actually say Blue Lock might be one of the worst animations I have seen. And, not, like, there's obviously worse. Like, if we're looking at CGI, and there's other depictions of, like, really... I still think Newgate's really bad. And... If you don't know about Newgate, I heard some news about Newgate recently. Newgate is a seasonal anime that came out about a season ago, maybe two seasons ago. A lot of the source material readers were hyping it up. That's why it was getting a lot of views. But god damn, it was just the epitome of mid. And I hear that studio literally went bankrupt. Like went down under. I heard some news about some anime studio. I'm like, oh, they went down under. I'm like, what's the key project they worked on? Newgate. And I'm like, doesn't surprise me. Really horrible. Because obviously the art isn't necessarily bad. But... The art is amazing. Look at these keyframes. The keyframes, just look at any Blue Lock episode. Don't play it, but just skip to different scenes. It looks stunning. It's vibrant. It's bold. It's colorful. But nothing moves. That's the problem. It, the quality drop is just so noticeable that it's just hard not to really compare it with season one and even other things. And I would say that in terms of just quality difference from going from like a season one to a season two, it is one of the biggest noticeable drop offs I have ever seen from a show. Um, I actually want to show a comparison of a manga in comparison to the scene, actually, which is pretty wild when you see it. So this right here on screen is literally Blue Lock's <laughs> animation from Season 2, and this is manga panels, okay? Manga- But One Punch Man manga is such an outlier. Murata, the author, oh, Yusuke Murata is- he's on a different level. It, I, I- I don't- I genuinely think that there's- there's not many anime that animates better than One Punch Man manga. And I'm not even glazing. Like, like, look at the One Punch Man manga and tell me that you think that most animes right now are better. It's not. The panels from the One Punch Man manga. And I know this might not seem fair. Because One not. Punch Man is known for, you know, quality. Yeah. Like, you know, like, high quality art. But what I want to point out here is, is that we have One Punch Man manga. That's still true. This is a manga at the end of the day. An anime should be able to move more fluidly than a manga, right? Panels, okay? We're not looking at the art direction. Let's not care about the art direction, okay? Let's look at just the manga panels flapped on top of each other in comparison to the blue lock animation. Let's not worry about the, the art and how it looks. Let's just look at the animation. And this is a comparison of <laughs> blue lock's animation versus One Punch Man's manga <laughs> panels. This is legitimately nuts. Yeah. This is actually freaking yeah. wild. The difference here on display. Bro, you could literally flip. You, you, you know, let's say you have a book. And you like flip the pages so that you see each frame by frame. That's something I used to do when I was a kid. I would like draw and I draw like a frame of like the Goku that I envisioned in my mind. And every I flip a page and he'd move a little bit differently. And I flip a page and he'd move a little bit differently. And at the end, you can do and you can see the different frames and it's being animated, right? It's basically this. But the difference is that in the One Punch Man example, things are moving, right? In the flip book, yeah. But Blue Lock example. <laughs> Things are not moving. The only thing moving is a CGI ball. This. I, I just like, how is this possible? How can a manga have better animation than actually a freaking anime episode? Like the, the How? It's easy. Corporate greed and blame Bandai Namco. My, my little birds are telling me in the comment section about the Blue Lock video regarding the production committee responsible for this disastrous planning. It's Bandai Namco. That's right. Bandai Namco is the reason why Blue Lock and Tower of God, they are both the committee, like the production committee for both Tower of God and Blue Lock, which are the two enemies that's getting clowned on this season. Tower of God's been clowned on last season even harder, honestly. But like, that's it. It's corporate greed, high up decision makers, a bunch of corporate suits that don't have any love for the anime. They don't give a fuck about this. All they care about is filling their pockets with their money and riding off into the sunset. Even though they could put in actual resources and create something like, let's say, Frieden, right? Something like, let's say, One Punch Man Season 1, right? A passion project where one single anime can have the impact of, let's say, 30 other shit fucking, you know, bullshit isekais that comes out on a seasonal basis. But since investing that much into one project is 
it's 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 a risk. If it doesn't pay off, you're fucked, right? They're prioritizing on min maxing farming these little increments of min max animations. Can't even call fucking animations. It's just that simple. Conflict of interest with business and art that will always exist. It fucking sucks. Whole role, the objective of an anime. No, I th I don't think Apis Studios is is literally like um like free of fault either. Like, don't go thinking that oh my god, poor Eight Bit Studios. No, fuck them too. The animator is not at fault. But do you think that band that production committee can just give these projects willy willy to these studios and the studios have no say? Clearly, there is communication going on between the high branches of the studio and the production committee. They collaborate and talk. They're probably proposing ballots and here and there and saying, can we have these projects? Right? They don't just give it to you. There's no way they're just simply innocent and they just say, oh, oh no, we were given so many projects. No, no, no. I fucked that shit, bro. The animators who are actually working on the anime, they are free of fault. But the decision makers, the higher up execs on the production committee, as well as the studios who collaborate and communicate and make these deals, they're the ones that should be crucified. ...is to adapt it and make it feel immersive like the characters are coming to life. But why does it feel like the characters are legitimately less animated than a freaking manga panel? That That's insane. That's an insane feat. It is less animated than a manga. I cannot believe that. Like, that's I crazy. Can. Now, I'm not saying that this is the animator's fault. There, there's probably it's a not. lot of reasons or we'll, we'll probably never know going on behind the scenes. What do you mean you'll never know? <laughs> What do you mean you'll never know? I'm a literal 8-bit studio blue lock fucking um, animator because he was outsourced. He was, so it seems like that guy has a lot more autonomy, right? Because he's not Japanese. He is an animator across, you know, across the ocean that took on the projects that can pick up any other project and feels freely of this. And he's like, yeah, fuck him. This is what happened. Episode 2, I put in the work in. They literally cut it out before it made it into the episodes. There is no future for this shit. Get out. But it is still just shocking how something like this could be a release. I just like, Blue Lock obviously became very popular. I wonder what the author thinks of this. That's what I want to know. You know in Oshinoko, there was the arc. Sweet Days, the lady girl, you know, she got fucked because the people who were adapting it just made it into a shitty like harem or something. Like, the author just feeling so bad that the adaptation of their work is so, so just misunderstood and mid. I wonder what the Blue Lock author is thinking. Due to the Japanese culture, he probably can't even speak out. I wonder what happened if he spoke out and said, yo, this shit sucks. <laughs> I don't know. So I just, I don't know why they would allow it to fall off a cliff like this, when it clearly could have gained a lot of, you know, you know, I guess fame, and a lot of money and sales and stuff. I don't know, I guess they didn't care, and, you know, they let it just, like I said, fall off a cliff. Um, another thing I want to point out, which is pretty fascinating to me. You can make a comparison with Blue Lock with this scene here with Inferno Cop. And you know what? Let's just let's, let's play this scene. Real quick. Yeah, that's pretty much that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> So, yeah. if you're wondering what this is, this is Inferno Cop. This was made a long time ago by Studio Trigger and Co. Trigger. They worked together on this project. It came out in 2013. That's so crazy. It's it's been such a long time since Inferno. Three minutes per episode. Very short. Cop came out, but it is a cult classic. It obviously just taking a look at the clip. You know, this is a godlike art and animation. Like there, there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. Like One Punch Man needs to bow. Bro, he's got fish for legs. He's wearing a diaper. What the fuck is a baby? It's a baby fish monster crab. It's like baby fish chimera. Bow down, demon slayer fate, all that. You you get the point. It needs to bow down to this art animation. But um, anyways, memes and jokes aside, you know this art animation obviously was deliberately made janky and just. Yeah, it, it, this is like intentional. They're trying to be funny with this. They know how bad it is. They're leaning into it. Just very rough. For just comedic purposes, it, it's very clear by the way this was made, it was meant for that. And it was also an anime short. Like, it had, like, three to four minute episodes, okay? That, that's how long it was. It was funny. It, it's not perfect. It's not, like, incredible 10 out of 10. But, obviously, they used the limited art and animation to really uh, tell a funny story. And so, when I take a look at, like, uh, you know, for instance, Blue Lock here, and the comparison of the manga of One Punch Man to Blue Lock... It's just like, this is obviously not made for a comedy, but it's un unironically have, has become a comedy at this point because of how- Yeah, and the community memes, everyone making fun of Blue Lock is the best thing right now. ...how bad it looks. So I'll leave it at that. 
thank you so much for watching. And that's pretty much it, right? Uh, at the end of the day, TLDR, TLDW, Blue Lock is suffering due to the production committee who is Bandai Namco and the production committee are a bunch of decision makers that decides, you know, which studios get what projects and the amount of resources and the budgeting, right? Everything that goes on behind the scenes to plan ahead for these projects. 8 Studios accepts these by after communicating and they took on way more projects than they can possibly deliver. Compare it to 2022 to 2024, it's very fucking obvious why season two sucks compared to season one. At the end of the day, the animators are not at fault. It's just greedy fucking corporate suits that don't actually give a fuck about anime. They're just doing this because it fills their pockets in the short run. They don't care about sustainability. They just care about farming this shit and getting the fuck out. They, they do not have any love for this. But the most recent episode is giving me some signs that they can pull off decently well animation if they try. And if the quality can be like this and better during U20, I think the arc will be pretty fucking fun to watch. Remember, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Please go give Mr. Chibi a like on the video. Here's the link. Go check it out. And I will see you next time.